My name is Jasmine Thomas, and I'm coming today from Saikas, which is located in the heart of what is known as British Columbia. I'm a member of the Frog Clan, and we are stewards of the water. We we'll also refer to ourselves as Yangatane, which means people of the earth. There is no distinction, there is no separation. We are one with the land. But before I go into my presentation, I would like to first um, share a song to honor our brothers and sisters of this territory as our protocol. Um, when we would go to a territory, we would sing that song. And if we were welcome, a song might be returned. But I will share, share one thing with them. And I want it, the energy that it sends to go to my sisters, to go to all those who, who need that good energy to keep on doing the work that we do. And this song is the bird song, and is my great grandmother's favorite song before she comes. this important business in the territory. So, I just wanted to share, I'll, I'll give you a motion to you, Pam, when I'm ready, okay? So nice. um, a little bit about where I come from in Saika is just some of the, the background. Um, the logging industry was a pretty big, uh, it's one of the primary industries in our, in our community. I think about 70% give or take of Canada's timber supply comes from our territories. Um, so we got some pictures here in the middle, you know, we still harvest our medicines, we still harvest, you know, food from the land. Um, and I feel very privileged to be able to have done that. And I want to thank, you know, the nations here in the East for holding down the line so that we had, you know, a few hundred years to, to enjoy our way of life and continue to live that. So I, I'm very honored and thankful to the nations in the East for holding that line down. And a little bit more in our community, yeah, clear cutting is a big issue. Um, my great grandmother, the late Dr. Sophie Thomas, was a, a very renowned environmental activist as well. You know, we were holding blockades against clear cutting in our territory. Um, but it's also, how our communities generate revenue, unfortunately, in this day and age. Um, 
but there is still unemployment rates as high as 95 percent. So, you know, it's one of the struggles that we face is trying to go to the land. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, but um, still something we're still struggling with. So the Young and Dene Alliance, we're a coalition. Um, so my community of Saikas, along with Natle, Nakazli, Takla, Tlazden, and Wetzotan First Nation, make up the Young and Dene Alliance, which I might also refer to as YDA. YDA's collective territory accounts for 25% of Enbridge's Northern Gateway proposed tar sands pipeline route. Our communities, like most of BC, First Nations have never signed any treaties or resolved land claims with Canada or the province, nor have we ever ceded or surrendered the right to our territories and watersheds. A lot of our communities still operate under the colonial band council systems, um, who are also affiliated with this alliance, but there's also the hereditary leadership as well. We live in a day where our communities are still trying to revitalize our traditional governance systems and and we just I think this movement that has been building on these pipeline issues has been breathing the life back into um, our communities. It's always been there, but um, recognizing that we both leadership in our communities are need to work together. A little bit about um, the proposed Northern Gateway Pipeline. Enbridge first came around to our communities in 2005, and from there, we began doing research to see what the proposed environmental, social, and cultural impacts would be to our communities. And some of these communities are also affiliated with the Carrier Sikani Tribal Council. We learned that the risks would be too great for a few dollars and some short-term jobs and that it was not a project our communities wanted for our future. In one pipeline, toxic condensate would be imported and then sent to Edmonton to help refine the bitumen. Once the product is fluid enough, approximately 525,000 barrels of tar sands bitumen per day would move through the other pipeline, increasing tar sands production alone by 30%. This dual pipeline proposes to cross over the Rocky Mountains, over a thousand streams, including two of the world's most important salmon rivers, the Fraser and the Skeena. And then the product would make its way through the Pacific Ocean on super tankers destined for markets in Asia and the Western US. Each one of the 250 super tankers required per year to move the product would be the length of about three and a half football fields and about 200 feet wide. So each one of these super tankers would carry two million barrels of tar sands bitumen and then attempt to make three 90 degree turns in some of the world's most dangerous waters. Many of these massive super tankers carry eight times as much oil as was spilled in the Exxon Valdez in Alaska. And I think it was just the 25th year anniversary. Um, there are still beaches in Alaska that are still filled with oil. This is why so many First Nations have banned these tar sand projects through the territories and watersheds. Inspired by the Coastal First Nations Declaration in British Columbia, the Save the Fraser Declaration, led by the Yanka Dene Alliance, was first signed in 2010 at States. Therefore, in upholding our ancestral laws, title, rights, and responsibilities, we declare we will not allow the proposed Enbridge Northern Gateway Pipeline or similar tar sands projects to cross our lands, territories, and watersheds, or the ocean migration routes of Fraser River salmon. To date, over 130 First Nations have supported this historic piece of Indigenous law to create an unbroken wall of opposition. The US map 
masquerading in red, the many First Nations who are opposed to tar sands pipelines and tanker projects in BC. First Nations all the way from the US to the Arctic Ocean opposed to Northern Gateway, Kinder Morgan, and the Keystone XL projects have band together under the Save the Fraser Declaration and the International Treaty to protect the sacred from tar sands projects. There are so many pipelines being proposed to cross through our territories in the hopes of creating a carbon corridor through BC to push out fossil fuels to foreign markets. But as you've seen from Amanda's presentation, there's folks right in the path of many of those proposed pipeline routes and they are holding it down. Thankful for them. In an attempt to create the carbon corridor, the National Energy Board, puppets of government and big oil, created the Joint Review Panel to make a recommendation on the Enbridge Northern Gateway Pipeline project. Our communities have pushed from the beginning for a separate First Nations review process to explore the many impacts of this project. But Canada would not budge, no surprise. They would not consider cumulative impacts such as tar sands expansion associated super tanker traffic and the issue of increasing carbon emissions into the atmosphere. The flawed process also did not recognize or incorporate our laws and governance rights. So because of those political reasons as well, YDA decided to boycott that joint review panel process. But I will tell you, Canada, that you cannot pawn off your duty to consult with First Nations on projects that would affect their treaty or Aboriginal rights to industries or to these joint review panels that have no mandate or no business to do so. But we applaud all those who chose to participate and register their opposition through this process, and they did so in record numbers, unseen in Canadian environmental review processes since the Mackenzie Valley Gas Pipeline Project. It came to no surprise that the panel would recommend that Canada approve this project based on the national interest. Again, it was just the recommendation. The Yunkadane Alliance and over 130 First Nations have already made the decision long ago that this project is banned under Indigenous laws. And as our campaign started to get more national and international attention, the Canadian government started amping up their campaign to support their friends in the fossil fuel industry. In 2012, Prime Minister Harper and Natural Resources Minister Joe Oliver started attacking all those who were opponents to this project and labeled them as foreign radicals. Here are some of the foreign radicals who are fighting against Canada's national interest. Our communities and many other opponents to this project have also been under constant surveillance, like we are terrorists, and treated as that. All we want is clean drinking water. And just uh, to describe the photos, um, oh, my mom, my former, our former chief, Chief, my cousin Jackie Thomas. There they are again, separate events, but got some of my, my family, some of those radicals. <laughs> Following the attack from the Harper government, our communities embarked on a journey across the country to Canada's financial capital of Toronto to attend Enbridge's 2012 annual shareholders meeting. Our people wanted to stop and meet with as many communities as possible along the way. We met so many amazing people, you know, they came as early as 6 a.m., remember in Saskatoon. They came with food from their gardens. They came with donations that they collected and signs that, you know, classes, you know, in their elementary schools made and that cherished support has remained with us and has sustained us on our journey. During our time spent with these communities, we were able to feast together, speak on panels together, take our opposition to the streets, but the most important part of that journey was the water ceremonies that we did. Each one of the nations brought 
water from their territories and along the way they were mixed together to symbolize that the water is what connects each and every one of us. And the quote here, this is about our freedom to choose our future, our freedom to live according to our own culture, our freedom to govern ourselves, and our freedom from the catastrophic risks of an Enbridge pipeline oil spill. We are fighting for our very survival. An oil spill into our lands and waters threatens our health, our culture, and our very existence. Next slide. There is one thing I would like to thank Mr. Harper and Enbridge for, uh, for uniting so many people across BC and this country who stand behind our legal ban on Northern Gateway. We are not alone. This pipeline project is not just a First Nations issue, an environmental issue, it is a human rights issue. And we all depend on water and air for our survival. <coughs> Some of the crazy radicals who also depend on water to live include folks from organizations such as the Canadian Asso Association of Physicians for the Environment to the BC Teachers Federation who have pledged their support for the Save the Fraser Solidarity Accord that was just done this year. We have seen Vancouver declare Save the Fraser Declaration Day um, and many other municipalities who have shown their support for a legal ban as well. Many of these allies, many NGOs, many individuals, we couldn't have brought so much attention to this issue, I think, without all of their help. But also recognizing that, you know, if you want to be an ally, that you respect First Nations leadership in these processes. So we have also launched our Hold the Wall campaign as one way to engage our many supporters who are committed to help us keep our wall of opposition unbreakable. The federal government now has the recommendation from the National Energy Board's Joint Review Panel and will be making their decision this June as to whether they will approve or not approve Enbridge's Northern Gateway Tar Sands Pipelines and Tanker Project. Either way Canada decides, it doesn't matter. Our passionate opposition to this project has helped awaken a country currently on the path of energy suicide and climate destruction. The Yakutane Alliance is committed to using all lawful means necessary, be it Canadian, international, indigenous law, any means necessary to stop this devastating project from ever being built through our territories, and has joined over 130 other First Nations to create a powerful wall of opposition that cannot be broken. So we are asking you to stand with us to hold the wall. and never allow Canada and the fossil fuel industry to succeed with their bullying tactics. It is only evidence that they are scared of the true power that lies within the people and through the leadership of many First Nations and Indigenous communities. And to that I would like to end. Masicho Snachaya Awe Yenla.